Okay, my super fam, Emily pre release discussion time. The girl where she pops basically out of nowhere, at least until whole universe actually mentioned her in her announcement. Or, you know, maybe her name has been mentioned here and there, but I didn't, you know, touch on the story too much, so I kind of miss on her. But overall, as usual, guys, pre release discussion will go through everything that we kind of know about Emily and try to discuss as much insight into her before her release as we can. But obviously, a very big disclaimer is that everything here is just going to be kind of like pre release data. It's not going to be official confirmation into her in any way and more or less just going to you know keep you guys hype for the new and upcoming character while waiting for her official release now guys if you've been watching some of my video you know that i've been recommending you guys loot bar for around three times before and i believe that it worked pretty well for you guys so if you don't know what loot bar is they actually help you to top up primo gems with very safe and secure transactions while having lower pricing discount and a very much a trustworthy service with over a hundred thousand orders with the majority of the reviews being five stars so check out loot bar through the link in my description guys if you usually top up as it is a very good way to get primo gems with lower pricing Now first off guys, most important thing is definitely going to be her skill and kit. But I'm pretty sure that you guys has already heard quite a lot about her skill. Either from, uh, you know, the Genshin livestream or other tubers video. And moreover, if you haven't already, then I've already discussed kind of in depth into her skill and kit in this video. So you can technically also check it out because I want to leave the time for other discussion. As that also take a lot of time. In which we'll be talking about Emily right here. Is that one of the most important thing you want to remember is Emily is made for burning right burn that into your mind because on top of everything else she is a dendro character there for a while if you want to force it yet you can leave her on any other dendro team then she can still work but you're only going to take out like you know 25 percent of her max potential if she's not in burning and therefore emily technically has to be on a burning team right and so how we can kind of view it is that she's going to be a burning sub dps that has more damage potential than nahida because while well, the problem with uh, you know dendro support like Nahida or Dendro main character is that they actually don't really do damage. They're more like just there for the buffing as well as the Dendro application for you. And then for stuff like burning reaction is still always been considered to be one of the worst reactions while well, obviously because burning reaction doesn't really help you to do that much damage while well, even if Emily is there and she's more toward the burning team and most of the time you are going to have consistent burning reaction up and wow yeah you're going to do damage but overall that's not going to be that much of a damage and therefore it comes down to the fact that well how much damage can emily really do which of course if we're looking into emily scaling that's yeah that's pretty good which is actually a good sign for emily however if we're going to be diving in a bit more depth then when we look into burning what kind of burning team actually exists and that's kind of like where the first problem come in because the problem is that burning has quite a few issues and first one is something i've just mention is that yes you will be doing burning attack however it's just going to be quite a little bit of damage and then secondly this time around you may be thinking that it's more going to be for pyro applications specifically and while kind of sad to say that pyro application isn't a lack of thing in Genshin right now and if you really want to have good good pyro application at this point there is a team that unironically is very similar DPS to most burning team right now and that is actually Sun Farajin which yes Sun Farajin is a pretty interesting team and can do decent damage but on paper not many of us actually use Sun Farajin if that's the case then now who's going to be willing to step down the ladder and say wow I'm going to do that as well with a burning team right that's going to be an issue with the burning team right now is that definitely we already have much better pyro applications if you take a look on the cryo side we don't actually have fast enough applying cryo unit which prefer melt and on the hydro sides all the hydro usually they're either the one which don't want to vape and want someone else to vape for them or they're still just going to be a better way of giving them specifically pyro application anyway and that is the combination of you know like shangling and kazuha and there you go job done right and the other issue that we may have to consider right now is like what is there going to be an incentive for you using burning over the things that we already have right because the answer before emily there's basically no reason for you to do so right now emily is a little bit less forcing than some of the specific character you know like nilu or chevreuse right uh, nilu and chevreuse you are really pretty much forced for them on a specific team emily doesn't really do that which is at least an okay thing for now so the problem that emily might be facing is now is that on paper and if you're looking into the character themselves emily is actually a pretty good character 
However, when you're looking into team synergy, just because you can do something well doesn't always mean that you can pair up with another character and make the team to be very good. Like, for example, just because you can have a lot of good healing doesn't mean that you can be the best partner for Farina, right? Well, for example, Chi Chi heals a lot, but obviously she's not the best partner for Farina. That's kind of like an issue that Emily has right now, which we really don't want to miss out. However, on the bright side is that, again, her damage, while well, if up until the official release, they don't change anything, then her damage is pretty good. And you're going to be seeing her doing pretty big number. And so if any of you who, you know, love big number, you're going to be at least lacking on that part. Which while with all the discussion that we've just had, let's have a look into some of the possible teams that she can have right now. Which first, let's have a look into Cryo. Well, Cryo, if we're going to be burning, then obviously we're thinking about Burn Melt, right? And there's technically like two Burn Melt teams that works okay before Emily. And that first off is going to be Burn Melt Ganyu. However, that I don't recommend you to go this team with Emily. Because first of all, the top tier melt team for Ganyu right now is kind of like Ganyu, Shaolin, Sucrose, and Bennett. Or if you want your Kazuya, then yes, Kazuya in Sucrose place. And it's got top tier DPS. Yes, can compete into top tier team as well. However, this team is very hard for you to use. We already kind of know how well, quote unquote, Ganyu do without a shield if you are not an expert at using Ganyu, right? So having Ganyu on a burn melt team that risks decreasing her own HP with burning reactions. Not to mention, sometimes you might come across Hydra enemies that cause central cores to appear on top of that without a shield and all the skill required for you to time your melt correctly that's probably not going to be an ideal team that you want to work in another one would be risley and i think risley burn melt team is going to be pretty decent while having emily on it if you really really want to go that route for real however the kind of sad part right now for emily is that she's going to be in a pretty big competition with another real best team is that that's going to be Rio, farina ben and shangling and that team is actually very very good because you've got shangling there who's getting all the vape and melt which is actually really good so that's something you have to keep in mind now let's have a look at hydro unit and right now i'm predicting that one of the best team emily may be having is going to be on a novelette team obviously it's just prediction at this point in time with all this team we really have to test everything out when emily comes for a final conclusion but on paper right now emily on new Blood team does have a lot of potential because new Blood vape is obviously very good and with the introduction of emily you can possibly run a new Blood team alongside with emily farina and shang ling and oh oh my god that team does have huge damage potential another team that you can run is obviously going to be farina vape where you have farina shang ling bennett and emily that team can also be very very good as well especially if you have a c6 bennett you can have like Farina being on field applying pyro on top of everything else as well and another interesting team well if you really want to force this out is maybe a siege win team this is probably us trying to salvage siege win as much as we can because now you can have like a siege win farina bennett and a emily team right with farina once again being on the field driving and siege win is kind of good here because we know one of the best things that siege win can do is to buff your e skill damage and wow that goes for farina and emily e skill and considering how good of a sub dps damage those two characters have this team might have good potential as well i'm very looking for forward to actually try this team out and see how well Siege Win can actually be here and you know we're trying to hop Siege Win into the meta as much as we can here. Other team we may potentially have is maybe Bergian. It's, it's still a maybe at this point because Bergian team has always been kind of having issues where technically there's always a little bit too much burning and we usually need like two units of Hydro or ideally well another Hydro or Cryo or Electro to get rid of it right and still right now we know that Emily dendro reaction is not good so emily herself would definitely won't be able to keep up the burning reaction by herself and you always want to pair that up with a second dendro unit and ideally that is going to be nahida on the team which is where the problem is right there because you would now have to rely on toma which while of course swapping out a bennett for a toma you can kind of know how much of a downgrade that actually is right but while there are still potential and we will still have to test out whenever she comes other than that mono pyro or we can call it mono burning where you know you have emily bennett as well as shangling or alekino and 
and Kazuya on that team or if you want to give Emily an easier time then you can swap out Kazuya with Nahida on that team and it will still do well. Other interesting consideration would be you know if you want to force the idea then you can have an overload burning team where you know we might have a saving grace for Sino team with you having like Sino, Fischl, Toma and Emily on that specific team because in the past the problem with Sino is that he never had a dendro support character that can keep up with his on-field time right you're just expecting at least around 15 to 18 second on-field time for Sino and Nahida is really bad for Sino if you are in wave situation she's only good if you are in solo boss situation but most of the time the abyss has wave situation which Nahida has never been really good and you have to rely on Dendro MC but now with the introduction of Emily you might be able to have like you know a Sino burn overload team and that can be good for Sino but other than that once again it's still very questionable if this is going to be a realistic case that you can use on top of you know many many other good teams out there for Genshin that we already have right most of the time many of this team might just going to be you on a preference case and use it for fun because oh my god there's so many good Genshin Impact team at this point in time that Emily is really much in a competition for. Moving on let's look into her best weapon now before we touch on best weapon let's discuss a bit about energy regen because Emily bursts actually do quite decent damage for you so her burst up time is kind of important at time obviously it's not the most important thing because the skill does all the damage mostly but also if you look into it Emily energy cost is quite low 50 energy is not something you really have to stress over and I'm really happy that they leave a 50 energy cost for Emily however due to the fact that her E skill probably not going to be helping her regen that much of a particle especially when sometimes you may have Emily on a solo dendro team you may be expecting to build a bit of energy regen onto her right but I would just tell you that I don't think that's too much going to be a problem because first of all in realistic case we can see that Nahida is a character that also have a 50 energy cost and while even though Nahida can regenerate herself a bit faster than Emily here and there we can still basically have Nahida burst up every rotation because sometimes you still don't have to think just about Emily herself but from your other support character as well because think about it how many of you are going to be using you know either Bennett or you know a Yelan possibly on an Emily team sometimes right or you know a Furina on your specific team and how many of you are probably going to be having a Favonius Bennett or Favonius Furina or you know a Favonius Yelan those characters still help you to regenerate a lot of particles and therefore mitigating Emily energy requirements by quite a lot so overall when it comes to building best artifacts and best weapon most of the time I don't think you will have to stress too much about having her energy recharge main stat and if you do get an energy recharge on sub stat that's great otherwise it is okay for you to have burst every other rotation now when it comes to a best weapon oh my god it's a luminous her signature so good on her I don't know why they make this much of a good weapon because on top of all the good crit rate that you have good base attack moreover you're getting so much attack buff from the passive and you also have energy regeneration wow what are they cooking with this weapon it's kind of like a must have weapon for Emily because it's such a huge difference compared to her other options the second best option is technically going to be the Calamity Queller the Luminos is basically around a 20% better than Calamity other than that right most of the other five star option for start stick that is going to be fine you know like a homa vortex scarlet and then jade spear as well as engulfing well sure you can use that but coming down to the four star option it's this is where it starts to become a huge difference because the best option for her four star right now is going to be a death match and that is locked behind battle pass right you have to buy a battle pass for her to have a good four star option after that best for free to play it's like a lithic spear with high stack right so you're forced to use her in a leeway team to get off your stack but if your lithic beer is on low refinement as well as you having no stack you bear off just use all the free to play options which next in line is kind of like a missive wind spear which is like an event weapon and most of you probably don't have this because Genshin Impacts really sucks to the point that they haven't got any event weapon rerun at this point so I also can't recommend this where the best reasonable free to play option right now is going to be kind of like a Katane Cross or a white tassel for a free to play weapon so if you're looking at it the difference between her signature weapon as well as your reasonable free to play option is kind of like a 60% difference which makes it 
if you guys are going for Emily, it's either you going for her signature or you get the battle pass and go for a deathmatch. Like that is really something you have to think about. This really sad situation for, you know, free to play Emily Wanters because it's just so, so weapon gated. I don't think we've seen such a character with this much weapon gated before that it's really saddening to see that Verse is doing this for the first ever burning character that we have in the game. For our best artifacts, guys, it's pretty simple. It's either going to be the burning set or deep wood. Now, if you've already got Alakino and been farming for the Bond of Life set, you've got spare burning set, then yes, overall, the burning set is going to be the best for her. However, you do have to obviously consider, you know, how much resins you are farming in each of the domain because if for example you don't have Alekino or other character that use the Bond of Life set most likely the Deep Wood is going to be more resource efficient for you especially when you are having Emily as a sole Dendro character on your team however for example if you're running a double Dendro you've already got like Nahida for example on a Deep Wood then yes Emily should be on the burning set then so basically you really do have to look into the situation in which kind of team you are building her and how good of artifact sets that you already have on your accounts other than that, uh, the Golden Troop, now it's not going to be as good as either Deep Wood or the Burning Set, so I really don't recommend you to use this set unless you have very very good substat and you can't really have the resource to go and farm the other two sets. Now other than that, a 2 piece set is actually very good of, you know, attack or dendro or double dendro if you want, but I'd rather have an attack and dendro 2 piece set. Now this is very good also is because it's a lot easier for you to get good substats on these pieces. So yes, if it's more resource efficient for you to go that way two piece is actually very very good now for the main stat it's actually just going to be attack dendro and crit depending on which stat you're missing and as for sub stat yeah you know crit ratio obviously the best attack percentage and so well if you have energy regen that's also good too all right now let's look into the constellation her c1 is actually really good right you're basically getting a 20 percent more damage for her e skill as well as her passive one which is the one that actually increases her aoe dendro damage right 600 percent you get an extra 20 percent increase into that not to mention her sense drop from her skill is going to be a lot faster now so kind of like once per second helping her to be able to trigger her passive talent a lot faster so c1 is actually okay c2 yes very spicy too right a 30 percent decrease in dendro resistance wow it's pretty good c3 right also pretty decent you get an extra three level of her talent skill a pretty good stopping point if you are really investing into your emily the c4 is okay you get more burst up time for like you know a maximum of around five seconds now and the rate at which your burst actually hit your opponent is quite faster too so overall this is still an okay constellation c5 yes more burst damage then yeah that's pretty good and c6 just basically turns her into kind of like a, you know an on-field dps for a couple of seconds and obviously you know it's all kind of like a c6 stuff where it helps you to have a very high damaging on -field build Emily for a couple of seconds then yeah it is a c6 after all now overall as you can see the constellation investment is looking into Emily it's actually not that bad however here is going to be a very big discussion to this part is that when you're looking into pooling Emily or investing into Emily versus some other good character that we're having into Genshin Impact is going to be some of the most important parts in this video that you want to be mindful of is that obviously there are going to be opportunity costs whenever you are using your premium gems to pool for a character right very big note here is that if you are pooling for Emily you want her weapon over any other constellation that you may be guessing to pull right because wow when you're pulling for a weapon sometimes it can be an equivalent to a c2 character if you are unlucky but on top of that considering if you're already thinking about investing into emily and you are somebody who are looking into the meta then well i'm just going to be listing out some of the other very good and better character than emily at this point in time that you may want to consider right like for example a new villette or his c one an alakino or c1 alakino a nahida or technically a c2 nahida if you're going for a constellation a yelan if you haven't already or you know if you get yelan to c2 oh my god the c2 yelan is very very good or you know investing into a furina all the way to her c2 constellation which is a c2 constellation furina basically works in any possible team that you can think of not to mention all of the buffing that she has access to and while you know for a cherry on top nilu is going to be coming back 
still one of the best character in the game and wow if you're investing into Nilu constellation all the way to C2 Nilu C2 it's also pretty spicy so wow those are just a couple of characters that I'm you know suggesting that they have more potential of investment than Emily at this point in time which is something that you might want to consider because once again yes if you're looking into Emily as a sole character and you don't think about any other characters in the game then yes Emily kit is actually very very good and also her constellation actually buffed her a lot but whenever you're comparing you know the usage of your primo gems onto you know, other character pools because while I'm pretty sure most of us is not a will right even for dolphins or free to play player you guys are still have to think about primo gems so I really have to put it out there and give some consideration other than Emily pooling right and so basically I think we've discussed pretty much everything about Emily in terms of pre-release information that we've got at this point in time and here's going to be my overall thought right um as I've mentioned if we look into Emily kit as a soul character her kit looks very very good however if you're thinking about putting her in a team where in realistic cases her team synergy is a little bit hard to deal with at this point in time because what I've already discussed a lot about this in the team sections and i feel that emily kit at this point in time we don't see the full potential yet it's because you know whole universe might be planning this for natlin's character coming in the future where you know in the future where we'll have more characters that resonate really well with emily for example you know like a pyro sub dps character that has very good buffing and pyro application right which is a perfect character for emily at this point in time and we don't really have a truly good pyro character that can do that at this point yet the only way we can do it at this point is going to be you having both Bennett and Shangling on the team taking up two slots in your specific team therefore it's not always sufficient but other than that Emily power level is very very good it's very spicy damage and also her E skill just like you know Farina and some other characters like Yaimiko you don't need to trigger a normal attack in order for you know her E skill to be activated unlike you know Yeilan and Xingqiu considering Hold Your Voice has been releasing some very good DPSs recently that don't use their normal attack for example like Nuvalet, Linny or you know to a certain extent Navi right and while even though emily is a dendro character that can technically be put in any dendro team and she can still work however you still have to use her in burning team otherwise she basically almost deal no damage so that's all we can see about emily right now but he is a big but obviously these are all pre-release information everything we've discussed in this video just take everything with a grain of salt because we're basing our discussion on the information that have not been released so while everything we'll have to wait until emily actually comes and make our decision then so guys i think that's everything i have to say about emily at this point in time if you are planning to pull for character in patch 4.8 yet you're still on the fence then i really have a good video for you guys to check it out so be sure to watch the video as i'm sure it will be very helpful to you if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe give the video a like and comment to support the video and i will get to you guys in the comment section i really appreciate you guys staying with me to this part of the video guys and with that i wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video